Welcome to Psychic Evolution with evidential psychic medium, Jamie Clark, and spiritual coach and healer, Maggie Clark. Welcome back to another episode of Psychic Evolution. I'm Jamie Clark. And I'm Maggie Clark, and this is a podcast where you discover the psychic potential within to empower yourself and manifest your psychic and mediumship gifts. And these abilities are so natural. They're supernatural. And today we want to talk about how to work with your daily spiritual tools. Now, I'm a big fan of making great routines that you can apply daily to work with things. So I'm going to let Jamie start because I know he starts the night before it even happens. So here we go. And Mag and I just want to be practical and give you some of the tools and techniques that we use. Because if we can at least give you a reference, something that we do, and you can see how it, the outcome, because right, we're sharing what we're doing, living our truth, then it gives you a little more comfort to put these tools and techniques to the test. See what might work for you. And if it doesn't, great. At least you've tried. And if it does, another tool into your Solodex is an eternal soul print of consciousness. So for me, and those who know me know I'm always on autopilot with everything that I do. And for myself, in the beginning, as always, I wanted to make sure that I was not manipulating other people to get what I'm looking for. I don't need to do that. There's enough for everyone and so much more. But I share these tools and techniques, and then I share it with others to go, you're not being made to. It's the co-creation of both of us. And so what I do each and every night, like last night before I went to sleep, and as I always say, I'm on autopilot, but last night before I went to sleep, I created a future memory. Last night, I was mentally already at the end of this, following day to day with this energy vibe through everyone else's energy field and back to mind with gratitude of being of service for those who even choose to vibe with the energy. And now here's the intent that I send that each person for their own choices, reasons, circumstances, and needs will magnetize to me in every way that I may be of service to them. And by the time they leave my presence, they will feel more loved, connected, directed, and empowered. And I leave that on autopilot, and I share the fact that this Technique, along with a few others, are what allows me to do this work. And as I say, this is not work. It's who I am for the past 22 years. If we're doing the best we can and living our truth, maybe there's something to what we're sharing. And if we can help you to help yourself, this is going to be a better place, one person at a time. And who are we starting with first? ourselves. Exactly. Hi, I'm Jamie. I'm no longer a hypocrite. But if we can give you what works for us and then, you know, again, add flavors, add whatever feels good to you, it'll help you to refine and define your psychic abilities. And again, these abilities are so natural, they're supernatural, getting comfortable, allowing them to happen and always be on, and the ability to create and co-create realities with other people. Not through, again, manipulation, but through co-creation with the universe, that it's all one. So the first thing when I do when I wake up is I check in with my dream state. Did I receive messages in my dreams? Uh, Do I need to analyze my dreams? I'm a big fan of all the dream work that I do. In my dream state, I receive a lot of messages. I allow my team to, you know, wake me up and open me up in the middle of the night so I can process information and consciousness in different ways. So that's the first thing that I do when I wake up. You know, I'm just like laying in bed going, okay, what dreams? And some dreams I feel like, oh, commit that to memory. And if you're keeping a dream journal, you can do that at that point. Um, There have been times where I have kept a dream journal on a daily basis. I'm currently not doing that at the moment, unless it's something I feel I need to write down, like a message from a guide or something like that. Other than that, I just check in. I analyze my dreams really quick. I say, okay, do I want to remember any of these? Sometimes I commit certain ones to memory upon waking, and some I don't. So if you're having a dream that you really want to look at and work with, when you wake up, say, I want to commit this dream to memory, and and just roll it through your head. And then you can analyze it later if you don't have time in the morning to do it right then. But when you say to yourself, commit it to memory, that helps it go right into memory. Not only being able to orchestrate your dream state to receive information, but as I always say, 
I don't want to remember nothing about my dreams. I do have my emergency switch on that if I were needing to receive a dream in any way that could help benefit from my guides, my master guide, I'm open and I will remember it. Otherwise, it's just the experience of the dream state. But having those tools and techniques, just like Mag is doing, she's in a very conscious way of experiencing these dreams. So she knows first and foremost what might vibe with feeling productive for her and what doesn't need to be committed to memory. But in being able to be selective with that barrage of beautiful information that she's open to, that can be a redefining energy through each and every night that you sleep. It can consciously shift you in many different ways. I'm lazy. I just go for that. I don't need to remember it unless, again, I'm supposed to. And then it's just every moment's a new day because for myself, when I was starting to do this professionally, the other side does not have to sleep. They were bugging me in my sleep state, my weight, everything. And those who know me said, as I say, wait, please do not bug me in my sleep state or I will not do this work. They haven't bugged me in 22 years. So again, it's the teamwork of respect and connection because we are a team. And for myself, we are the last verb of information. Why would we not set our own rules and regulations? Those abilities to remain safe, harmonized, and connected. The next thing that I do is I set my wards. And we've talked about that. Um, you can check out Psychic Safety, the last episode of Season 5, if you want to you know, kind of just touch in and, and see what that's all about. But I set my wards. I call in my angels. I call in my guides, my team. And I also say today is a beautiful day. I feel amazing. And I tap into the essence of those words, but I feel that in my body. I feel it in my mind. I feel it in my consciousness. And this whole thing of today is a beautiful day. It sets the tone saying, this is how I want to vibrate today. And this is how I'm vibrating. And that is just a beautiful way to start this opening. And right after that, I slip in to the vision of my divine self. And we've talked about this in other podcasts, but basically you create a vision of who you are as your divine self and you slip it on like you would put on a pair of pants or a bathrobe or whatever you like. And it's just wearing the energy of who you relate to. Like, how are you eternal? How are you really in a very spiritual, divine, sovereign, beautiful essence of who you are. You slip into that energy, and that's the first thing that I put on. And for myself, just to reconnect all the time, when I think about it, because I'm always on autopilot, but when I'm waking up in the morning, first dynamic, safety, implosions, explosions of the white light, harmonized, energized, and realized. Then... I introduce again, always connected to my team, my master guide, all of those guides that I'm aware of and those who I'm not aware of. I want to include everyone in every way, even if I'm not aware of them. And when I make those connections consciously, it just reiterates what I'm doing on autopilot, but it also gives me that conscious connection to go, oh yeah, I'm thinking about it. There we go. But I'll do it and then kind of release it so that it's not in the back of my mind or my soul going, I hope I'm safe. I, I'm like, nah, frick that. My own tools and techniques allow me to be confident, relaxed, and receptive so that as I'm working in this capacity, it's a dynamic where I'm not fearful, but open and safe. Now, another aspect that I do after connecting with my team is I connect with loved ones on the other side as graduated this life as we perceive it that are connected to the people that are coming before me in any way for that day, whether it's on the phone, in person, it does not matter. And the cool thing is, is there are a lot of times where before I even have the session with the client, their loved ones from the other side are coming to me before I even meet the person. And I always share the fact to go, well, don't you kind of find that interesting that they know who I am out of billions and billions and billions of people? And that kind of connection that I learned a long time ago, that if they give me some 
part of information. Sometimes it's been a candle or a word or whatever the case is, and I've known to say it. I'll be like, hi, I, I know I don't know you, but can I say things before we even start? You know, but up. So it's a little bit more validating. And a lot of times they're like, and one was a particular candle in a scent and the other side, because I had a variety of candles to choose and give to guests. And the person from the other side in this case was like, please choose that one there and give that to this person. And so I said before we started, hi, you know, I, I, I was shared the fact with your loved one on the other side that I needed to give you this candle. And I've got a variety of them, so I'm not quite sure why, but I trust your people. And here it is. And in this case, that person was like, that's their favorite scent. That's the candle that I always light. I'm like, oh, great, because I don't have a clue. But here you go. So again, not that I don't care, but I'm neutral. And when we can be neutral enough in our own life experience, we can allow other people to communicate through us without disjointed energy. It gives us more of a relaxed, receptive connection because I know for me, my intent is that anyone who comes through to me is only on the good channel or I do not exist. Again, it's the little tools and techniques that can be a consistency that give you more confidence, receptivity, and awareness of all of this energy that is always here, right here, right now. Now, again, these are creating good habits, good routines, and if you just keep doing them daily, they build upon themselves. And then your team knows exactly how to show up, when to show up, what you're open for, what you're not open for. Now, I don't actually tap into how I'm going to support other people right away first thing in the morning. I'm really all about connecting to the higher self. And so that's where my focus goes. You know, like I really just let myself have my morning. I love having just my own energy with me and my family. I always look around and have so much gratitude. Even before I get out of bed, I'm laying in bed, my dog snuggling. And I'm just like, I am so blessed to be here. And I'm so grateful that I have this, that I have a bed to sleep in, that I have, you know, my dog and, and people that I love in my life. And of course, my husband, you know, and I'm just, you know, side note, but this is what's the most beautiful thing. Cause we wake up with this sense of like, okay, let me just check in with myself, but let me just feel this gratitude that I have for life. And I just vibe with that energy. I literally will lay in that energy of gratitude for a long moment of just really appreciating life and anything else that I'm grateful for, whether it's opportunities or work or seeing friends or family or whatever it might be, all the things that I feel I need to give a sense of gratitude for, I just vibe with that energy like first thing in the morning because I really want that to be the primary thing that I start my day with, right? I start my day going, oh gosh, thank you so much for this beautiful life. And I'm going to have a great day. This is an amazing day. So this gratitude just builds, it creates a heart expansion and it creates a fluid energy between me and the universe so that I can feel into the universe from my heart center, from my heart space in such a beautiful way. And I feel like this sets the tone of how I approach life. And I think when we approach life with this gratitude and with this ease and with this, oh, this is such a great day, then that's what we're putting forward on our path. It's almost like spreading fairy dust on a path before you, like sprinkling the essence of gratitude and, and, and love and the vibrations of happiness. And, and that's exactly how I like to experience my life. It doesn't mean that things might not shake you up throughout your day. You might react to things. You might have challenges come up. But you're setting the tone. You're choosing the tone. You're vibrating with that energy right away so that as you go through life, you can always return right back to that vibration. After you're done being upset or reacting over whatever turmoil might happen or might not happen, like this is the way of just consciously setting the tone and allowing yourself to tune into those vibrations. When we are like in this, in like almost we're awake, but 
we were kind of sleepy. We have still the essence of the dream time and the subconscious. And I feel like this is an opportunity for us to reprogram our subconscious mind, to tune it into the channels that we like to experience and that we wish to vibrate with. So it's a great time. I love doing this first thing in the morning. And, and I do this before I got out of bed. I just feel how grateful I am to all of life. And notice how how you're approaching this and it sounds like you in your own way are creating a future memory that fairy dust pixie dust whatever we want to refer to is your way of sprinkling that beautiful loving gratitude of energy that as a vibrational match to me no karma but cause and effect a natural law that will bring you more people circumstances and experiences matching that happiness or flavor of life or excitement or any of those qualities and mag seems to get a response consistently or she wouldn't be doing the same pattern of approach basically for me so in that connection now we're seeing that there are so many different ways to get yourself ready for the day in oh you know, yeah even before the day begins can we have those interactions in this case first with ourself because as Mag is saying, I want to connect with myself and be in a grateful mode and then just go with that and see. And by sprinkling that loving energy on it, more than likely, a lot of the experiences, connections to people might be in a more positive, productive experience. And for myself, you know, I always say, what are these tools and techniques manifesting in my life or why am I doing them? That's why Mag and I want to share what we do that works for us so that maybe it's another avenue that you might want to give a try. And sometimes you might be surprised because that other perspective, that different way of seeing things might give you a different vantage point of life experience. And when we can get you comfortable with using your abilities to realize, again, everybody is a psychic medium. Everybody has the ability. I always say, if you've got a soul, you're a psychic medium. It's do you want to choose to work with that? And what level do you want to take it to? The next thing I love to do is get into nature. I am a huge Let's go for a walk. I like to put my feet on the dirt. Of course, I have shoes on in the desert because everything here pricks and sticks you. It's crazy here. But um, what I really love to do, I mean, I walk my dog every morning. So we, we do our family walk. You know, we get out in nature. We connect to the natural world. We look at a beautiful sunrise. We appreciate the desert and all of its facets and qualities and all the different stages of the seasons. And we're out there walking and just really appreciate appreciating the earth. And this is a time where I like to honor earth, mother earth. I really love just to say, okay, let me just feel deeply into the earth. And of, of course, I'm giving gratitude towards her. She homes us, you know, this is, she, she literally allows us to live on the surface of her, her being, you know, this is just a beautiful thing that we have here. And so that is the next thing that we do connecting with nature on the days that we're traveling, and we might not be out walking or doing anything. I always like to look outside, look out the window, appreciate the, the landscape, still bless nature, still bless the earth, however you choose to bless her. And, you know, when you can, you get out in nature, when you can, you, you, you just connect. Sometimes you're just going to step outside and put your feet on the ground and just kind of feel that vibration or feel the sun on your face or just look at a cloud. So it doesn't mean that you have to go out for a walk because there have been times where I wasn't able to walk. You know, if, if I had an injury or something, then I still needed to connect to that natural world. And I felt really weird when I did it. So it's, it's remembering to do that, even if it's just stepping outside or looking outside, just the appreciation of the natural world and the earth that we live on. Now, in finding these tools, these techniques, there are many, many different tools and techniques, different ways of reading energy in a psychic mediumship way. For myself, I was brought up with my mom, who was an amazing psychic medium. Now, in training with her, we did not train with all of those awesome tarot cards or a variety of the others. It just became a direct energy read. And that's how I was brought up to work with that. Had she been teaching tarot or any of their, I would have been learning it. 
Those are awesome tools. And I'm always impressed with the fact, one, those who know me know I'm into the spiritual stuff because everything's spiritual, but I also question everything. And for myself to see the Tarot and how amazing Mag is to share that insight and information, these are cards, yet they're speaking to her soul and her awareness that she is also the conduit or the communicator for what if we're being read for, because the average person may not understand what those cards even mean. But when you can get a translator, so to speak, that is confident, that is effective, it becomes a little bit more open and less fearful to read them cards. Because for myself, um, it's, it's the ability that in training all those years of just reading energy in the conscious thought, it gives me my way of reading energy in the way that I do with accuracy the best that I can. Just like Maggie has a variety of other tools and techniques, it's not just one. She's been fairly well trained in a variety of aspects. My point is, it's all energy. How do you want to read that energy that feels good and that you're confident with that is effective, that is as accurate as possible, so that when you feel a certain way or you receive a card or any insight, that there is validity to it? Because I always say, you know, here's the information, but what's the outcome of that information? I always want a reference for myself. I'm just real practical. So when we can get that, and as Mag does beautiful readings for me every day in the morning time, I get a nice reference of, okay, here's the cards and how they're being presented. And then I want to take a picture of it and then see the outcome, see what the reference is in the way that those cards were vibed with and the way they played out. Because you'll start to get a bridge of connection go, oh, Oh, when this particular, in this case, that card comes up, that will usually mean this. Not every single time, but I believe on average, it'll have that reference point. And Mag has done this for a long, long time, 25, 26 years, I believe if not even more. <laughs> but she's worked her tail off because she's willing to put the energy into these different tools of reading energy. And the great thing is she has versatility. It's not just one avenue that she can connect with information about a person or experience. There's a variety of different ways. And possibly she shares that there could be maybe with different tools, you get different perspectives about the same person or experience and circumstance. How exactly does that work, Meg? After walking, right? Got to have a cup of coffee here. Okay. So <laughs> that's also another habit. Now, whether that's good or bad, whether you drink coffee or tea, doesn't matter. But, you know, now we're, now we're thinking about our physical bodies, waking up, putting sustenance in it. But what we like to do is we like to sit down and do readings. And when we do them, we're asking for a daily reading from our higher self. We're checking in with our, using our own psychic abilities, our own messages, however we receive them and saying, Hey, what do you got for me today? That's basically what we're doing. So here we, we sit down, we do tarot cards because that's my jag, you know, and it's beautiful. It's amazing. It's fun. And what I'm asking for is a direct message from my higher self to come through these cards. And if I'm reading for Jamie, I'm asking his higher self, or sometimes I just say, hey, Chi, throw in your two cents, right? And then my higher self, they, they have like a little, you know, little like meeting in the ethers so that when I'm reading, I'm, I'm working to read through his energy field as much as I can, just so it's very personal to him. The way I would read Jamie's cards is different the way that, than I would read anyone else's cards on the planet. He's very unique. We're all extremely unique. So I'm always thinking about the unique soul print of consciousness of who I'm reading th for, connecting to their higher self. And what you do when you're building a daily habit of connecting to your higher self, I use tarot cards. I also use oracle cards. Sometimes we just pull out a deck of dragons or a starseed deck or whatever it might be, something that we're really into at the time. I have gazillion decks all the time laying around, just pick and choose whatever feels good, maybe a goddess deck. It just depends, right? Whatever vibrates with you. And then I'm reading into those cards, reading into those messages. As, How can this apply in my life today? How does it resonate? And sometimes I get very clear messages. Oh, you should do this today because this was a great opportunity, a great energetic match for this project you've been working on. So maybe you should get to, towards that project. So it helps me define what creative energy I want to express in the day, where I want to apply it, maybe what I want to work on. 
It just depends on if it's a work day or non-work day as well. And But I read into those cards and I get the messages for me. It helps balance my energy field because I'm spending time to say, I would, you know, we do this professionally. We are, we're both psychics. We, we use different tools, different mediums to, to, to work with our gifts, but this is who we are and this is what we do. But we also pay attention of receiving those messages for ourself first. And that's something that cultivates a really good routine because not only am I asking my higher self to help me read for other people, I'm asking it to help myself. And again, this whole morning routine that I've got going on is to connect to me, to connect to my life, to connect to my higher self, to connect to the earth that I live on. Think about all the things that we do. We connect into our subconscious and our dreams. We connect into our gratitude, our I am, our vision of our divine self, you know. Think about all of these beautiful qualities that get wrapped up into the first two hours of my day. This is spent just cultivating the relationship I have to who I am. And that changes day by day, which is why we do daily readings, because we are constantly changing. So think about what feels resonance to you. If some people use a pendulum and they ask questions from their higher self, I like to throw down cards. Jamie has direct connection to Master Guide Chi, so Chi drops in messages all the time on his walks. His guides show up all the time when he's walking in nature, giving him reference points or messages or tapping him into different aspects of himself. And so, again, these are things that daily, when we allow this channel to be open and we're cultivating that channel, all I can do is be stronger for when we take these abilities elsewhere in our daily life, into our work, into any arena that we find ourselves in. It's that daily practice. And again, if you throw down oracle cards or tarot cards in the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, look at them and say, how did this apply to my day? It helps you build a relationship to the tool that you're using. So whatever tool you're using, look at it at the end of the day and say, how did this play out? How did I reflect on this? How did this resonate within my day, within my being, with what I cultivated in my life? So we're seeing how effective different tools can be that work for you individually. It's whatever works for you that you have the comfort and confidence to connect with. Now, the ability to embody the universe, that inner essence of the eternal beingness of who we are. Chi, my master guide, let me know the fact that each and every lifetime, each and every vehicle that you find yourself within is connected to your eternal soul print, that beingness that vibes with the entire universe that we are connected with. Because the dynamic is, is when I've been calibrated or been given spiritual experiences, I was taken to an energy vibe that was just like, yes, that's amazing. And then bip, it was stopped. And it was shared with me the fact that, Jamie, that's the energy vibe of what your body can handle at the moment. Anything more, your heart would have stopped and your body would have dropped. I'm like, okay. But it also became the ability to realize now, recently, that we are the eternal universes already within us. It's now in what way do we want to express the totality, the unification of oneness that all of us are connected with. I always say, cosmically, we're all the same age. We are all one. What I do like about what you just said, though, was the unification. And this is another daily practice that I have, is unifying with the oneness, with the wholeness, with, and I do it through myself, but the art of unification is such a beautiful practice. And this is a, a new way that I've been integrating this unification practice in my life. It's a new habit of mine that I've formed. And what I do is I put my hands together in a place of prayer. And uh, it's right at the heart center where your hands come together. And it's very interesting when I do this, I feel like I'm unifying above and below within and without. And from the macrocosm to the microcosm, it's very cool. I feel like I'm unifying the cosmos with the earth 
I feel like I'm unifying myself with my eternal essence. And energetically, there's so much that happens in your hands. It's amazing. Your hands give energy, your hands receive energy. And the left hand receives, the right hand gives, right? But also, I study self-help Jin Shin Jitsu, and your hands are, are very much used in self-help Jin Shin Jitsu to harmonize the life energy in the body, to help create a balance and a harmony with body, mind, and spirit. And so when your hands come together in, in the sense, you are actively harmonizing all the life energy of your whole entire being. And I think it's your whole entire being of the essence of who you are eternally in a unification process with God or the creator or the oneness and whatever we want to call this, right? This expanded energy of all that is. And so as I do this hands together in prayer, I literally start by unifying above, below, within, without. I connect to my eternal soul print of consciousness and I vibrate that in my heart space. And I feel your heart center also is the midway point, you know, as above, so below, you have three chakras above three chakras below, it's a unification of your chakra system of your energetic system as well. And so I feel like this art of prayer is a unification with God or with the creator. And this is the most beautiful part of my daily practice that I've been tuning into recently. And I, I don't remember what at what age I stopped praying. I remember when I was young, I used to kneel and pray before bed. It was a whole litany of I, I don't even remember the words that we used. I mean, it was probably I grew up Episcopalian. So whatever they say, um, can't remember now. Our Father who art in heaven, blah, 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 whatever, whatever that was. So and I remember praying and not always, I don't remember if I prayed to ask for things or if I prayed to give gratitude. I really don't remember. I remember really fondly praying for my animals. That I do remember. And maybe my family, I don't know. My animals usually came first in in my mind sight for whatever reason when I was a child. But after that, you know, when my parents got divorced, we stopped going to church. So I think we stopped praying before bed as well. At what point, I don't really remember, but I, I now I'm bringing that art of prayer back into my life, back into my energy field. And it's usually a prayer of gratitude, but it's a prayer of unification for me. And this daily practice has been so energizing and so activating and so unifying. I feel so whole and complete when I do this. It's like this wholeness and this unification, this oneness washes over me. And all the energy of the universe is connecting through who I am. I find this to be such a beautiful daily routine, and I do it several times throughout the day. I don't have a set time in which I do this, but I make sure that I do this every day. I love to do this in nature when my feet are on the earth, but they don't have to be. I find myself doing this when I take breaks at work, uh, maybe after a meal, whatever, whatever, whenever it feels right. But several times a day, I feel like this is helping me to unify with the who I am, the I am essence. It's eternal. It's divine. It's sacred. It's honoring. It's just the most beautiful daily practice that I have right now. And I feel like sometimes we're asking for things when we pray and we're praying for things to happen or for things to manifest. And at the same moment, I'm aware that all time is happening now. So everything I need is now. Everything I am is now. And it really returns me to this present moment. I feel like a little Buddha. I feel like a goddess. I feel like an eternal essence of of oneness. So I'm going to encourage you all to think about what that feels like to you. Maybe you incorporate it into your daily practice. I find it to be the most spiritual thing that I can actually do is put my hands together in a place of prayer, honoring, 
and reverence. And you bring up an interesting point uh, from Chi, my master guide. He let me know that we do have more than just the seven chakras. And he also shared the fact that, you know, the ability to do a, a, an energy read, they call it psychometry. That's the ability to grasp an object or touch it. And you can do it from a distance, but grab that object and get the vibrational patterns of information that are connected to that and whoever's touched it. Now, notice Mag was also sharing the fact that the left is receiving, the right is giving. These are two individualized energies as we perceive it. Yet, each hand has its own chakra, each foot, and your entire energy field is an, a chakra. And Chi let me know to go, okay, here's one chakra, here's the other that seemingly are separate, but if you put them together, it creates a whole different acceptance of reality. What is prayer? Focused thought. And the ability to realize that, for me, the hands are symbolic of grasping spiritual concepts, the feet walking your spiritual path. Notice how a lot of times as we're grasping these spiritual concepts to try to understand more, we'll get into the prayer mode, bringing equality to the way that we're approaching things to realize, okay, if it's all one, then I can use different tools to create the end result of oneness. Exactly. It's what works for you. And thankfully, Chi's very insightful that he just gives me different perspectives and tools and techniques in order to put to the test and that I can learn from. Because we're always growth-seeking beings. We are always learning, and our soul's evolution is a constant as well. So as we get into these tools and techniques and a little bit of the symbolic energy as well as the physical energy, we start to realize that it is all interconnected. So think about how you want these daily routines to show up in your life. Think about when they fit into your schedule. Think about what they mean to you. Think about how you build energy as you do something every day, like exercising your body as well. We're not even going into that, the physical body right now. We're just going into these tools that can help you. So think about what that means. Develop routines that resonate with who you are, and then just be disciplined to do them daily and see how they shift and transform your life. Because when you're vibrating in those frequencies of love, of harmony, of prayer, reverence, honoring, connection, all that you get back is those qualities. So have fun building a strong spiritual routine for yourself. Create those daily routines, those daily habits, those daily mantras, whatever they look like to you, so that you feel you're happy and unified within who you are. And truly, we are all one. When we can do this together, it only amplifies our ability to share that energy and love and compassion with others just by being ourselves and realize that we can make a difference in this world and many others. It's will you choose to and in what way do you want to make a difference? And all of these daily habits will help with your psychic and mediumship development because you're tuning into who you are and everything happens through you, right? And with you. So the more balanced you are in your life, the more that you can expand into these other aspects of your psychic evolution. So have fun with your psychic evolution. Make it an honoring and a great journey. And let us know what your daily routines are. We'd love to hear new techniques that we haven't explored yet that might amplify and help us unify with who we are and with the oneness. We'll see you soon in our psychic evolution. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are so grateful that you have taken the time to spend with us on our podcast today. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And remember, these abilities are so natural, they're supernatural. And if you want to have more fun with your psychic evolution, we do have a mystery school. Check it out. There'll be a link in your show notes. And you can join us and indulge in all our classes and become a part of the Psychic Evolution Inner Eye family. And if you feel like this podcast can help someone, please share it with a friend if you feel like it could help them grow and expand in their psychic evolution. Until next time, have fun with your psychic evolution.